is up, everyone? Ripple Van Winkle is back. Happy St. Patty's Day. Happy Wednesday. March is halfway over. I can't wait to eat some corned beef, some rye bread, some spicy mustard, a little piece of cheese on that. Today, as my director is making it for lunch, she probably just started cooking it in the little slow cooker or the rotisserie. I'm not sure which way she's going about it, but I am excited and I am going to make sure I take advantage of this. Enough about that. Listen, a lot to go over. I don't have a lot of time. I know you don't have a lot of time. I'm going to try to keep this video around 15 minute mark. Let's see if I can make it happen. But first, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Hit that bell. Hit that thumbs up. It's free. It's a good way. It's actually a great way to support the channel. Give me a follow on Twitter. Link is below at XRP News underscore. Do not forget the underscore unless you get that old creepy guy who waves his fingers together and he keeps telling you 589 overnight and he keeps talking about flipping some kind of switch. I don't know what he's talking about, but you don't want to follow him. You want to make sure you follow the one and only. Now listen, in the description below this video, I have linked a Ledger Nano XS, whatever you want. They are vetted links. A lot of people have asked me, where do I buy it? How do I know it's safe? The link in my description is vetted. It is safe. Go there. Buy one. Buy two. Buy three. I don't care, but that's your safest way going about it, people. All right, let's talk about the price. Market caps come down a little bit, but still over $1.7 trillion. The Bitcoin dominance is still floating in its magical range, sitting at 60.4%, and Bitcoin still in its magical range between like 52 to 58,000, currently sitting at 55,132. Our beloved XRP is sitting at 46 cents. We are down just about 3% over the last 24 hours. That's okay because once again, XRP is floating in its range. We really need to break 53 cents before we see any kind of movement to the upside. It's coming, people. XRP, XRP's price has been coiled up for quite some time. I know I've stated this before, and I'm going to keep stating it because when it all comes to life, you are going to understand the saying that I have been thrown out there. And it is the longer the base, the higher we go to space. Look at other coins that have made impressive run-ups, even in the last few days. If you look at BAT, BAT had a nice little long base. It shot up almost 100% in one day. We are going to see these type of returns for XRP. The question is when. Nobody in this space can actually predict the date and time it's going to happen. All we can do is look at the charts, compare the charts to, to the older bull run charts, kind of see where we're at, and then take a stab at it from there. But it is coming. The XRP price is coiled up that's going to be the title that's going to be the thumbnail of this video because that's exactly what is going on and once it uncoils once it springs back and then shoots forward there is nothing i repeat there is nothing that can stop the price of xrp and for all those people dming me asking if xrp is going to miss this bull run 120 percent no XRP will not miss the bull run. XRP is going to have its moment to shine. 2021 is going to be the year of XRP. I'm telling you, you're going to see a $10 plus XRP at the minimum. Some people, some some of the better charters in this are saying XRP can even peak at $30 this cycle. Time will tell, but it's coming this year at some point. Only seven months left in the year, people. Let's keep it going. Some Bitcoin news. Bitcoin could hit 115,000 by August. Pantera Moorhead writes, Bitcoin is now ahead of our April 2020 forecast schedule to hit $115,000 this summer, wrote Dan Moorhead, CEO and co-chief investment officer at Pantera Capital, a blockchain hedge fund, and an email newsletter. The Pantera prediction is based on the stock-to-flow model and analytic framework that values an asset's price based on its annual insurance schedule. The model measures the scarcity of Bitcoin, which is governed by the underlying network programming code, into the blockchain's design, which is launched 12 years ago. So, Dan Morris, CEO of Pantera Capital, huge supporters of Bitcoin, obviously saying that Bitcoin is further along than they thought it would be at this current date. They are now seeing that by summer, by August, we can see $115,000 Bitcoin. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you see more probable to happen? Bitcoin 2xing from this point, which is going to put you at your 115, a little less. I know, don't kill me for the math. Or do you see XRP going up from 45 cents to 90 cents? 
XRP. That should be your answer. If you are here for the money, for the returns, for the gains, XRP is your clear winner. You're going to get a better return out of it. That's not financial advice. That is just simple math, people. 45 cents to 90 cents. We can see XRP do that in a matter of hours for Bitcoin to run from 55,000 to multiple all brand new. The whole way up is going to be pretty much an all-time high record setting to 115. And we know at some point Bitcoin is going to run out of steam. I believe it's running out of steam now. And that the price is going to consolidate and come back down until the next bull run. So that's my output. That's my views. But hey, it's always nice seeing that these guys from Pantera Capital, these big investment companies that are behind Bitcoin, saying that Bitcoin has outperformed the pace that they thought that they would have thought at this time. And from a man, Ralph Kahneman, Ripple's partner, SBI, has purchased a 5% stake in Rudant a blockchain supply chain finance company based in Singapore and is a key player in China. Root Ant uses R3 Quarter, which is another SBI investment, which a quarter can use XRP to settle transactions and for the back end and apps with a focus of usability. So very, very interesting. SBI is expanding and it looks like they are getting deeper roots into China. We know Ripple has ties into China with American Express. We know R3 has ties into China. And now we know that SBI is purchasing some stakes and companies that have stakes in China. China, at the end of the day, is going to be a huge player. I firmly believe that they're going to use their own Chinese digital currency. And I firmly believe that they will use XRP to bridge it. Because once again, nobody owns XRP. It is open, decentralized. People control their own. That is what these countries want to do, especially these central banks. Now let's jump over. I don't know who's seen this, who didn't see this. This is minute 57. Swift, yes, Swift is coming to life. Been saying for three years now. Swift has two options. Either adapt or die. Swift has to choose. Swift did choose. Watch this video. It's a minute 57. I don't know if I'm going to get flagged for it. I might get flagged for it. I might talk over it just a little bit. But here we go. Together, we are at the heart of the global financial system. We move the transactions that keep the world's economies working. Transactions that represent real business ambitions and the livelihoods of our friends and family. What we do underpins the world's way of life. Today, that way of life is changing faster than ever. At Swift, we are evolving too. We use our expertise to help our community move faster and work smarter. Payments and securities transactions should be instant, frictionless, and transparent. They should have end-to-end -end integrity and global reach. This entire process should be driven by smart data and shared services to unlock huge opportunities, to help you strengthen an existing markets and open bold new possibilities for the future. We've laid the foundations through game-changing services and technologies that are already transforming the industry. Now, we're going even further taking innovation to the next level by transforming the Swift platform with new capabilities. So you can reduce costs and offer increased value to your customers. We are delivering the infrastructure to help you adapt, thrive, and grow, and together, shaping the future of payments and securities faster, smarter, better. So listen, couple of takeaways from this. First of all, this ad, absolutely on point. This was a fantastic video. And as you can clearly see, Swift has stepped up to the game. Swift is not going to die. They're not going to go away without a fight. They knew once Bob Way was in that elevator with Godfrey Labrie and he told them what Ripple was doing. Swift knew they had to make a move. They had to make a change. Well, for the past three to four years, we haven't heard much from Swift besides their Swift GPI, but now it looks like Swift has stepped up to the plate. 
They are talking about faster, cheaper payments 24-7 globally around the world, moving money, moving data, securities. Very, very interesting people. This is just a little teaser. Who knows where this is going? Who knows if they're going to adapt blockchain? We do know Swift's partners with R3. I mean, listen, if I want, if you want to know my humble opinion here, Swift will run on XRP. It is the only digital asset out there that can move money 365 days, 24-7 for fractions of a penny. And on-demand liquidity is a game changer, has always been a game changer. I think Swift thought their GPI was going to be a big improvement. It really wasn't. We knew it wasn't. It was still a messaging system. I believe Swift got in bed with R3 because that was a way for them to leverage XRP. I think at some point everything comes out and everyone is running on XRP. That's just me. Time will tell people. And then yesterday Thinking Crypto did an interview with David Schwartz. This came out last night about 8 p.m. Eastern staring at time. Mickey B. Fresh was so kind to pull some clips from it. I think you need to have a listen. I pulled three clips. I think they're very important. First one, David Schwartz is talking about Codius and how it could be implemented. Yes, he says it's ahead of its time, but he describes a way that Ripple could have ha could have or has implemented it using Ripple services and toolkits. Be sure to check out my tweet below. So everyone said Cody is this dead. There's no more Cody is. Ripple got rid of Cody is 100% false. Anyone that did a little bit of research and looked over, went over to the GitHub page was able to see that the code was still live and well and was still kicking. Here, Mickey took some screenshots from Cody's.org's main website in 2015-2016 using Wayback Machines. The screenshot is from the homepage of the Codius website back then. Then the screenshots on the right are from the Codius homepage presently. Hmm, proprietary technology? Flare was originally built on IL. P. Very interesting. Let me pull these up for you. Let's have a look. For those of you looking at the screen, it says here to stay. Codius is used by Ripple Labs for banking and enterprise integrations. Codius supports the language of the web. That was the ILP, which it used to be built on. And now we look today. Codius applications can pay each other using any currency using Interledger. Something is brewing, people. Codius will be a game changer. That is going to help the XRP ledger scale. I want you to have a listen to this. It's about 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Here we go. Well, so the original idea behind Codius was to build a DeFi platform that did not have a native token hmm. that could accept payment with any token, where you were basically paying for entities to run smart contracts using any token at all. And the idea was that if you had an automated platform where you could do that, then the people who would be actually running the smart contracts would generally not even know what smart contracts they were running. They would be chosen randomly and they would have no incentive um, to, they would have no incentive to try to game the contract because the contract would be distributed. And we use some very clever cryptographic tricks to reduce the sort of pain point that you would have. So the pain point that you would have is like, if you're writing a, if you're writing a smart contract and you're actually paying for its execution, the more servers that run it, the more it's going to cost you if you're paying for their execution. But the fewer servers that run it, the more likely it is that someone might gain control of a small number of those, you know, a small number of servers, but that's a large number of your servers, and that they could then, you know, steal your funds because the keys would be distributed across those servers. And we came up with some very, very clever cryptography tricks. Um, using something called erasure coding that makes it much, much, much more difficult for someone to compromise the smart contract. And so that, that pain, that trade-off would not be as painful. So you could have a smart contract that paid for its own execution and could get the equivalent security of running on hundreds of servers without having to pay hundreds of servers to run it. Um, I think we were kind of way ahead of our time with that idea. And I think that what everybody who's like tried to implement that has done is they've just put in their own native token. And part of that is because when you have your own native token, it does make some things easier. Like, for example, you can destroy it, you can create it, and that makes some of the economic modeling simpler. But also, it's a way to monetize it. Like, Codius, the way that you would monetize it would be by providing services to the ecosystem. There's no native token to monetize. And my thinking was that, like, if, if we were the company that built most of Codius, people would by default probably just use our services. Like you need long-term data storage. Well, the one that like your toolkit uses by default is operated by Ripple. And so people would, other people would run other services and you might use multiple services, but there would be no reason for you not to use ours because like, you know, we would, you know, we would have a reputation that people would know about. And 
It's all very interesting how Codius couldn't be implemented. Listen, Codius isn't dead. Codius is going to come to life. It's going to come to market very, very soon. All right, we're about 15 minutes in. I do want to play. Do, do, I got two other clips. Let, let's, let's play them. Let's do it. David Swatch talks about the Flare Network. Let's have a listen to this one. Another two-minute clip. Here we go. Blockchains like Avalanche's consensus algorithm, and they're taking some of the payment and account ideas from XRP, and they're looking at some of the, De the DeFi from Ethereum, and they're trying to stitch that together. And what it's going to come down to is their judgment, whether they build a Frankenstein's monster or something that solves real problems. And I think one of the big advantages that they have is that they have an idea of what the use cases they're, they're going to be targeting are. And they're like present day DeFi use cases that have kind of proven themselves. So if they can build a system that's, that's really useful for that, uh, I think that's important. So these are use cases, unlike NFTs, like with NFTs, people don't seem to care that much that they're decentralized or censorship resistant. Like if you look at the big projects, you know, they're, who nobody even knows or cares what blockchain they're built on. Like, right? All we care about is that we get a great user experience. But in the DeFi space, where you're talking about manipulating money, it's completely different. Like the infrastructure matters and, and the fees matter. Like if you build a project on Ethereum, it's not just a matter of like, oh, people have to pay these high fees, but the fees are unpredictable. Like if I'm reliant on being able to submit a transaction to your project three months from now, I have no idea like how much that's going to cost. Right. And those are, so they're very focused on those real world problems. I'm hopeful that they'll be able to build something that like provides great solution. They're really smart. They've taken on a pretty broad challenge, but, uh, but, but I mean, they're, they're a fantastic team. Got it. And, some folks that ask, you know, what's the relationship between Ripple and Flare or completely separate entities, Flare is doing their own thing, or are you guys helping build anything with them? Um, I mean, so we, you know, before Ripple X, we had this thing called Spring with an X and we invested in, um, in the Flare team mm -hmm. and we, we love, we love what they're doing, but they're not, just to be clear, like we don't tell them what we don't tell them what to do, and they're not so, they're not in some sense like committed. To, I mean, they're committed to the XRP ledger from their own commitment, but we haven't like sworn them to loyalty in any in any way. Like they're going to build on the technologies that they think are best, and and this is something that we discovered at Spring, which is like if we go to a company and we say we're going to invest in you, but you have. To all right, there you have it. That's David talking about Flare. Remember this interview came from last night. Check out Thinking Crypto's channel to hear more about this. Here's the interesting thing. When Flare comes out, who knows what the price is going to be of the Spark token. We've seen the IOU run all the way up to like $1.70 so far. It is outperforming the price of XRP, and that's only an IOU. They don't even have a working product yet. I am really excited to see the price of Flare and all the value it's going to unlock, just not only for XRP, but XLM, Dogecoin, and whatever need, other native assets they're going to add. Flare is, is, Flare is bringing excitement back. Let me tell you something. I can't wait. I've been more excited. I believe we're looking at June as the release date. And then we're going to jump over from Michael at Valve, Valve 5 Links. Let's, listen, congratulations, all your Cardano holders. Coinbase is listen, Ada. We've seen Ada shoot up like 20% yesterday. I guess Coinbase still got that Coinbase pump left in it. Full trading is going to resume on March 18th. This is very, very exciting. But I'm going to cut the video there. It is running long. You know I don't like to keep you guys in the morning. Listen, enjoy your St. Paddy's Day. Be safe. Wash your damn hands. Be nice to be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.